okay, it's time to create some more evidence. And this is really strong evidence for how you're assisting in um, complying with the workplace health and safety laws. And at, at this level, you need to be involved with um, helping other staff members in their training and understanding of um, their responsibilities under the Workplace Health and Safety Act in your state or territory. So the great thing about this task, that means you'll also be gaining some evidence that could support you in creating complex documents, which is a unit of competency, or creating or writing simple documents, which is at a Certificate 3 level. So you'll find that sometimes one product can be mapped against all sorts of units of competencies in all sorts of nationally accredited courses and qualifications. So look, there's a couple of steps in this one, but that's okay. You're going to have this YouTube to walk you through it and there's a couple of different ways that we can achieve that. So my suggestion is rather than step one opening a company Excel spreadsheet, go out to admin and have them access the files and what you want them to do is just copy a list of staff names. So they may have to sort that by department first because what you want to end up with is no more than about 10 names for a team group uh, copied across into an Excel spreadsheet. Now you might just be able to do this more simply yourself by opening up a blank um, Excel spreadsheet and just typing the names in yourself. Now the only problem with that is a quality control and you would need to ensure that the staff names and surnames are correct but a team leader could check that for you. For the sake of this level in this course we're just going to go ahead and have you quickly create one in Excel. This could just be a simulated exercise and you could be making up employee names if you like. So step one is we'd go down to the start bar and open up an Excel document. So this opens up a brand new document and normally you'd find that staff names are listed down what we call the x-axis here. This one here is the y-axis. So I'm just going to place in a few random names. Okay, so I've just selected some of the staff members' names from here uh, at Evoke and they form part of a team within one department of our training organisation. So you know, as I said, if, if you're using this as a simulated activity, you can just go and create family members' names. That's fine. It, it's all about understanding the skill steps in creating this. If, however, you are in a work environment, use this as something you can genuinely assist with in the workplace and make sure that you have the correct spelling of the surnames and the names of the employees in a team. But make sure that there's no more than about 10 in a team. So now that you've created that, you can just come and hit your left mouse button and highlight down. Once you've let go of that, you can then hit the right click right button of, of the mouse, I call it right clicking, and then we just hit copy. Now the template that we're about to use has the, um, the fields for the people running it across the y-axis. Okay, So what we need to do is firstly what we call transpose the names. Um, into the y-axis. So we're just going to keep it on this same blank document for now. So I'm, I'm just click to cell down. Now I'm going to hit right click on my mouse and then under the or paste options you can see one called transpose. Now just click on that and you'll see that it's already shown you how the names would be transposed across that y-axis. Great, so we've got those across now and it's highlighted so I'm just going to save or copy that one across. So right click again because they're all highlighted, copy. Now we can minimize that and we can place them 
in our training needs analysis spreadsheet. Double click on that and it will open it up in a new window. So this is embedded in your module. I'm just going to make that a lot bigger as well. So, All right, so you can see where this template is the training needs analysis and we're going to just change the title of that. So in a moment we'll do that. We'll just go and paste our names across. So, so I'm just going to select four of those individual name fields because I've only got four in my team and then I'm going to right click and then under paste options I'm just choosing the one with the little links there, the little chain links called paste link. And you can see how my small team of four have come across through there. So all of the data for Robert will be all the way down here for Sean, for Nick and here for myself. So what you can see here now on the x-axis is there's a range of compliances with the workplace health and safety legislation. So before we look too closely at that, let's come back up to the top and the other thing you're going to do so you can actually modify a template is to come up and change the name. So training needs analysis, we'll just click on that cell there and you can see how we can work within it. First thing I'm going to do is punctuate it. That's my English teacher background. But it's also um, a, a corporate standard that you would need to have everything correctly punctuated, correctly spelt. So there's now the training needs analysis correctly punctuated and we're going to call it workplace health and safety legislative compliance. Okay. So I've just typed it in the box here and you can see that it's come out nice and big. So make that change. Let's hit save as we go so we don't lose any of our work. So up here in the left hand side we've got the little save icon there. All right, now we can't lose any of our work in our module. Don't worry about these other individual names, that's fine. You know, we know that they're blank and there's already been sample data placed in. That's so you can demonstrate that that's been graphed. So we're going to be changing these values in a moment. So now that you have all of that and you've saved your people across, you can either go and approach each of the people in your team individually or you can go up to that team leader and ask them to do um, an analysis on each of these people in the team. Um, there's advantages and disadvantages for both. Um, perhaps the, the, the ideal way would be for each individual to do a self-analysis but then have the team leader come across because you know if there's if there's um if there's a competency that says you know consistently applies policy um, you might find that the team leader might disagree with that from their observations and they might then have to alter that so basically we've got a uh, rating between one and ten and one would be not satisfactory and 10 would be consistently and you can find anything along that range. So we might approach Robert and we'd say, Robert, I just need five minutes of your time. Um, we're just going to, um, we're just going to determine what sort of training you need in safety. So uh, I just need you to give me a rating between one and 10 of, of the following statements. Okay, so you know that you're aware of relevant workplace health and safety laws. So one would be not at all and 10 would be always. Okay, so Robert says, oh no, not really. So you'd be giving him a one or even possibly a zero. One's fine. Um, 
takes reasonable care of own health and safety at work, well, he might say always or consistently. So, um, you know, you'd be putting a 10 there. Don't forget we're checking back with the team leader uh, who may have a slightly different idea about that. Sometimes people underrate themselves as well. And according to the team leader's standards, they might actually bump up their, their one. So let's say Robert doesn't have really any idea of the of workplace health and safety laws which is quite common very very common um he'd probably rank himself as a 10 but you know perhaps the team leaders observed a couple of practices and and might bring it back down to about a three or a four takes reasonable care of health and safety of others in the workplace and the team leader agrees, you know, most of the time, so that they're going to rank at about an eight. Understand the workplace extends to any place work is normally carried out. Uh, oh, Robert didn't know that. So sometimes this type of assessment or this pre-assessment is learning in and of itself. So sometimes assessment is for learning. And now that he knows that, he probably doesn't need any further training on that. But at the time, that was his understanding. So we'll just leave it as a one. Complies with reasonable workplace health and safety instruction from supervisors. Well, he might believe he's a 10, but when the team leader comes along and meets with you to scan the whole group at the end, he might say that there's been some complaints from supervisors and that's why the training for your team needs to happen. And so we'll adjust that back to maybe about a five because he complies with most, but you know, there's certainly uh, a training gap there. Knows where the workplace health and safety policy and procedures manual is located. No, he didn't. No problem. Don't tell him at that point. Just say, look, no worries. You know, we'll, we'll certainly get to that with the training. And understands and follows them. Well, he can't if he doesn't know where it is. Follows work health and safety procedures for the work role. He's pretty good in his own department. Uh, he wasn't aware that there was formal procedures, though. So perhaps that's about a three because even though there's no unsafe practices and he might just inherently follow safe procedures for his job, you know, we still need to teach him any, any technical procedures. Can identify workplace health and safety managers and owners or the directors of the company. So that's again the persons conducting a business or undertaking and their Offices, or that you know, the, the actual senior managers of the company. Um, so he might be able to identify who those senior managers and business owner is, but he doesn't really understand their obligations under the Workplace Health and Safety Act. So that's a one, because we're going to we're going to train him, we're going to teach him. Can identify union representatives? No, nah, he doesn't know anything about that is confident that there will be no discrimination against him if he raises a health or safety concern. Well, no, he, there's, a, there's a really bad workplace culture there in regard to safety at your workplace perhaps. And, you know, it's, it might be common amongst staff that they believe, and it might be falsely, which is the purpose of training anyway, is to change the culture. But they might believe, oh, I wouldn't dare raise a, a safety concern or ask my boss to spend $5,000 to replace the equipment because I'd worry that I might lose my job or not get that promotion or I don't want to be seen as, as high maintenance. I don't want to be seen, you know, as, as a pain in the neck. So, um, you know, if that seems to be the beliefs, attitudes and values, um, you know, make sure then that that's about a one because we definitely need to get some training happening that changes that, those, those belief systems in the workplace. Moving down now, understands the conditions for entering the workplace for an entry permit holder, which is a union officer. So if they don't know again anything much about the union's uh, just just have it as a one and then you might want to include in here some specific procedures for that that 
for that team. So what you'll see is these, in this template, there's been a lot of calculations already built in and that will be recording the total scores and the averages. So perhaps there's no procedures there, that'll be zero. Okay, so total scores there and then the average score out of, you average it by the fact that there's 16 questions and the average score overall, he averaged about 1.9, which was pretty low, you know, two out of, you know, on a scale of two out of the 10, that's pretty low. So Robert's going to need, definitely need a lot of uh, safety training there. Okay, so once you've gone and done that with either all of the team or you've just shortcutted and gone to the team leader and have them assess the, the team, this, this isn't a really serious deal in, in the sense this isn't affecting staff performance, this isn't determining whether they're going to get a, their bonus or not. This is a training needs analysis. So this is about the team leader determining whether training is necessary and, and being able to then measure the effectiveness of that training. So once all of that data is saved, so go back up and hit save. you then can exit out of that um, document or you might like to keep this as a genuine report that you can share with your workplace about the training needs of, of that particular team. In fact, your workplace might be so impressed that they'd like you to continue and assist with this in the workplace and do this for all of the teams. What that would mean is you would then save as and you can place it somewhere in your company's intranet. So for the moment, I'm just going to put it on my desktop. And this will be training needs analysis. And then whatever, whatever your team identifies with, I'm just calling it training needs analysis team A. And we save that. And you can see here down the bottom where we've just kept that page as team A. Now to create um, this analysis for each individual team will then allow you to have, you know, unique um, graph analysis and that's an excellent performance measure and really is wonderful in team motivation so uh, if you know if they're practicing safe work techniques if they're interested in um, understanding about their legal roles and responsibilities you can even then show them a before and after you can even, um, you know, have a competition between different teams to see who has, you know, has the highest performance. That's just an option. But um, this, this particular template has been designed to apply per team and save as a new file for each different team within the organisation.